Why me? Why me? Coming right up on GGSP, we take on some single-player puzzles in virtual reality with Moss Book 2. This wasn't the plan. Plus, I'll tell you all about the four games that made me a gamer. Welcome to GGSP. I'm Jem. And I'm Jax, looking after things while Rad's away. Now, I know we're hearing about your top four favourite games later in the show, Jax, but could you give me a tiny clue now, please? Oh, Jem, I rarely couldn't. The trick is to surprise you later. I'm pretty sure those were clues, but I still have no idea. Hello, Jem. Hello, Jax. Hey, I see we've got a review of Moss Book 2 in today's show. So, would you like to hear a mouse joke? Uh, yeah, okay. What does a computer mouse like to eat for a snack? Um, microchips! <laughs> that was actually pretty good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go do the gaming news. Oh, I've got one for you, Darren. How does the mouse eat the microchips? With, With megabytes! <laughs> hey, everyone, I'm Jax, and welcome to the weekly gaming scoop. Oh, Jax! This week, I worked on something to help us out. What was that? <laughs> that was a laugh track. I dug it out of the archives. It plays whenever you make a joke. Quick, say something funny. Oh, um, knock knock. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Oh, alrighty then, let's get into some virtual pets. Niantic. The video game company behind the hugely popular Pokemon Go game is making an all-new pet simulator. It's called Peridots, or just Dots for short. The game will work like Tamagotchi, where you have to care for and feed your endangered pet, involving actually walking to real-world dog parks or locations near you that your pet wants to visit. I'm not sure if I'd leave my house just to walk a fake pet. Really? A virtual pet sounds perfect for me. We could go on virtual walks together. <laughs> Was that a joke? Next up, we have an all-new Sonic game coming out on Roblox. An official Sega Sonic game has been released on Roblox for free. It's called the Sonic Speed Simulator and features Roblox rendered versions of classic locations like Green Hill Zone, as well as the option to play as Sonic, Knuckles or Tails. According to the developers, the biggest challenge was trying to make a fully polished game inside of Roblox. My tip would be to make him go fast. <laughs> I don't get it. That's literally what he does. Well, anyway, speaking of all this speed running, it's time for some esports news. Every now and then in a Mario game, you might find a special block that keeps giving you coins every time you hit it. The elusive coin block. Speedrunners of Mario games have been trying to figure out how many times you can quickly hit this block to get more coins. Apparently, there's a timer that starts when you first hit it, so the quicker you are, the more coins you get. Most gamers can only get around 10 coins from these blocks, but if you're a world record holder like Andrew G, you can get as many as 16. Impressive! I guess 16 coins is the absolute maximum of human potential. That wasn't funny! Yes, it was! Well, that's all the stories we've got for you this week. Should we do one last round of name suggestions from GGS peeps? <gasps> yes, please, Jack! From Damon, we have Miniature Internet Robot Assistant, or Mira for short. And from Elijah, Sweet and Super Scoop Helping Assistant, or Sasha. Great suggestions. Reading names sure is exciting, but it's time to get back to the studio. <laughs> it's been about four years since we last stepped into the storybook realm of the PlayStation VR game Moss. But now we are finally back, guiding Quill, the little mouse with a big sword and even bigger attitude in Moss Book 2. Oh, I didn't know you were such a big fan of rodents, Gem. Oh, only Quill. Anyone else and it is on site. Remy and I have personal beef. He knows what he did. OK, noted. But before we get into the review, a quick reminder that VR is recommended for ages 13 and over. And when you're playing, be sure to take frequent breaks. OK, with that out of the way, let's crack in. Indeed. 
We must get to the throne. We've never seen a bond as strong as the one between you and Quill. Moss Book 2 opens up its fantasy world in a big way, and not just in the lore department, but with beautiful environments to explore, new characters to meet, and more enemies to conquer. And it's all wrapped up in the same storybook charm as the original, picking up right after the cliffhanger ending we were left with. Oh, I never played the first one, Jem, so I was worried I'd be left scrambling to catch up. But book two gets you up to speed pretty quickly. Fresh from defeating the evil serpent Sarfog, Quill must gather the remaining shards of King's Glass in order to bring down the Arcane, an evil force threatening to tear apart the land of Moss. But our plucky hero isn't the only one on the hunt, as the tyrannical Tylan and his followers pull out all the stops, hoping to be the wielders of such incredible power. Because what's a fantasy story without an evil owl hell-bent on world domination? Not a tale worth reading. Once again, we take on the role of controlling Quill as the reader. A ghostly figure watching from afar and using our floating orb to guide Quill on her journey. This is where the VR controls come in, as you use the DualShock controller to interact with objects to help her solve puzzles, pin down enemies to give her a hand in combat, and occasionally high-five like the best buddies we are. Oh, my heart, Jax. So cute. Oh, if only all the critters you came across were that adorable. On your journey, you and Quill will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with all manner of arcane monsters. The most common are the little beetle-like creatures that come in various forms. Some are heavily armored and immune to regular attacks, whereas others are more crafty and will shoot projectiles at you. My favorite were the little roly-poly looking ones that the reader could pull back and launch like a pinball. Teamwork makes the dream work after all. It does indeed. And a good assortment of weapons is always welcome too. Something Quill has covered. Along with her classic sword, you also have a hefty, almighty hammer. And an agile but weaker chakram to shake up combat and navigate the many puzzles that make up each of Book 2's magical worlds. Not only that, but each weapon also has a special ability linked to it that the reader can activate by holding down the attack button and then touching your controller to it. Quill Sword lets her teleport short distances, taking out anything in her path. Her hammer can create a ghostly version of itself to be dropped when needed. And the Chakram can be used as the world's sharpest boomerang, recalled to Quill's hand in an instant. They're neat little additions that shake up the standard platforming-based puzzling in a fun way. But the time they take to activate meant they were a bit finicky to use in the heat of combat where precision was key. Yeah, especially when you have to reach out of the way enemies. It makes it a frustrating balancing act. As much as I love being an invisible, otherworldly force, I did have a few issues with tracking when I went to grab items further away, or when I went too far outside the camera's limited area of movement. The PSVR is over five years old now, and compared to other, more powerful VR headsets, its age is starting to show. It's not game-breaking or anything, but those issues did break my immersion a few times. Especially because there's no option for move controllers either, so you're acutely aware of just holding a regular DualShock. That's not to say the reader can't do anything fun, though. I loved interacting with the environment, creating flower bridges and climbable walls of vines. There's one really fun part in a later boss battle that has you wrestling a giant hammer from the clutches of the fearsome warden. When it works, it works so well. And I love the way the gameplay fosters this relationship between Quill and the reader. Even when the story is sucker punching you in the feels, it's just so wholesome. Right? I was not expecting to care this much about a bunch of pixels shaped like a mouse, but here I am. Aside from my issues with the tech side of things, Moss Book 2 takes all the good stuff from the first game and expands on it, as a sequel should. There's a great variety in the puzzles, the combat is satisfying for the most part, and the world is a pleasure to explore. But I'm hoping we'll get a version on more powerful VR headsets in the future. I'm giving Moss Book 2 4 out of 5 rubber chickens.
Look, I'm easy to please. You give me a story-driven VR game with fantasy vibes and a protagonist I can high-five, and I'm sold. So it's no surprise that I fell in love with Moss Book 2. It's a delightful little package with a surprising amount of depth to its story and themes. But the triumph soon faded as they descended into the eerie quietude of the secret chamber. Though it does at times suffer from the tech it runs on, it's still a gorgeous world. And the full 360 scope captures that wonder and beauty in a way only a VR game can. So I'm giving Moss Book 2 four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Can we talk about that Remy thing now? You don't want to know, Jax. You don't want to know. Come on, kid. Gotta move while he's still sleeping. So, of course, you have to bow when royalty asks a question. Oh, and when emoticons come through, just emote them with your mouth. Right, OK, bow for emoticons, emote for royalty. Got it. Let's not get hung up on the details. How about we jump in with this video question from Stella? Hi, GGSP. I have two questions for you. First one, what's your favourite Pokemon character from Pokemon Shield? Two, what's your favourite Super Smash Bros character? Also, here are some pictures for you. Aw, oh, thanks, Stella. And a very impressive artistic interpretation of us you have there. Yeah, it's awesome. And like all great art, it certainly provokes thought, doesn't it, Gem? Thoughts like, what if Pikachu became a host of the show? We could have a new segment called Pikachu Reviews. Although I guess most of his reviews would just be Pika Pika, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, now, on to your question about our favourite Pokemon character from Pokemon Shield. Well, Grookey is about as adorable as a cheeky little green monkey can be. So I'm going to go with Grookey. I like Grookey too, but I've been a water type guy since back in the day. So my favourite would probably be the water starter, Sobble. Oh, Sobble, what a cute name. As for our favourite Super Smash Bros characters, well, Rad and I have named our faves a fair bit. Mine are Kirby and Zero Suit Samus, of course. And Rad insists on selecting Waluigi, despite him not actually being in the game. But who's your favourite, Jax? Oh, well, I tend to main Link. Gotta love that Master Sword. And he has a few solid ranged attacks with his bow and arrow and boomerang. And the remote bombs come in handy too. Kaboom! Ooh, I love it. All right, moving on to our next question now. And this one is from Austin and Benjamin. Hey, DGSP, I'm Austin. I am Benjamin. We have two, two questions, questions for you. One, one, is there any new Mario games coming out this year? Two, is there any buckle gun games coming out this year? And can Rad please do these? Hmm, well, Rad's not here at the moment. Do you want to have a crack at these, Jax? Oh, it would be a great honour. <clears throat> ah! <gasps> ah! some fabulous emoting there, Jax. Good job. Oh, thank you, Austin and Benjamin. To your first question about new Mario games coming out this year, well, there's a couple we know of so far. There's Mario Strikers Battle League Football, set for a June release. It'll have 5v5 matches and is based on soccer, though it's said to play very fast and loose with the actual rules. Plus, Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope is due out this year. The sequel to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, it'll once again launch us into some turn-based strategy, but this time it will take place across different planets. And to your question of whether there are going to be any Bakugan games this year, sadly we can't find out much info about that. The last major Bakugan game to come out, I believe, was Bakugan Champions of Destroyer in 2020, and it had some pretty mixed reviews. There does seem to be a bit of a Bakugan presence on Roblox, though, but I've never played any of those myself. We had a look for signs of any new Bakugan games on the horizon, but didn't find anything. At least for now, anyway. Alrighty, well, we are ready, willing, and able for one more quick vid, and I reckon it's this one from Abel. I see what you did there. Hi, GGSP. Today I have one question. When is Ninja Turtles Rise of Shadow coming out on PS4? Bye. Thanks, Abel. I think we should give Darren a call about this one. He is, like, the biggest TMNT fan that I know. Oh, can I call him? Sure, go ahead. 
Aloha, this is Darren. Oh, hi, Darren. It's Jackson Gem at the Ask SP desk. Just, you know, answering some questions, no biggie. Oh, splendid. I hope you're avoiding Newbury at all costs. I think so. I, I hope so. Anyway, Evil is wondering when Ninja Turtles Rise of Shredder is coming out on PS4. Hmm. I wonder if Abel means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. There was a game known as Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ninja Run for mobile, released in 2018. And there's a TV series called Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Rise of this, Revenge of that. Gets confusing, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, maybe tell us about Shredder's Revenge, please, Darren. Well, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is an upcoming retro arcade-style beat-em-up brawler. It will feature all our favourite heroes in a half-shell, plus playable Shredder and April O'Neil. It was planned for release last year, but was delayed. So now it's due out sometime this year for PS4 and other platforms. There's also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Cowabunga Collection, which is a compilation of classic Ninja Turtles games, set to launch this year as well. So there's a whole lot of turtle power to look forward to. <laughs> totally. Well, anyway, thanks, Darren. Bye. Ta-ta. Well, now we are totally out of time for Ask SP this week. If you have a question for us, go here to send it in and make it a video for your chance to score some very sweet GGSP loot if your video ends up on the show. Who's your favourite Ninja Turtle, Jim? Oh, that's so hard. Maybe Michelangelo? He seems like an agent of chaos and I really respect that. What about you, though? Oh, Leonardo, easily. He has two swords. That's better than one. All of us can probably come up with a list of games that started us off on our gaming journey. Well, today I'm taking you through my personal top four games to never forget, the ones that made me the gamer I am today. And we're starting with something spooky. Number one, Ghost Trick. Ghost Trick is a detective game where you're trying to solve a creepy crime mystery. The trick is the person who died was you. You play as Sissel, a ghost with amnesia, and the only person who can solve your mysterious death. Turns out in your past life, you were actually an ace detective. And now, you've got until midnight to uncover a conspiracy in the heart of the city before your spirit disappears. Ghost Trick was originally a Japanese game made for Nintendo DS. I had never played a DS game like this before. With its beautiful art style and an electro jazz soundtrack reminiscent of 90s anime. Ghost Trick's puzzles were well thought out and always interesting, most of which saw you using the DS touchscreen to interact with objects like a ghost would, blowing out candles and knocking over pots and pans. My best friend from primary school lent me this game, and I had to finish it in one night because he was moving away the next day, and I had to give it back. It was cool, though. I felt like the ghost detective trying to get everything solved before midnight. 2. Pokemon Gold Pokemon Gold is my favourite game in the whole Pokemon series. I think it's something to do with the locations. From the spooky haunts of Lavender Town, steeped in its musical mystique, to the bustling and multi-storied shops in Goldenrod City, which is actually based off the real city of Osaka in Japan. I spent hours in this game, as well as in the park with my trusty Pokewalker. This defunct piece of technology was a little device that tracked your steps. You could put your favourite Pokemon from the game onto it, so the more you walked and explored in real life, the more your Pokemon would level up. My friends and I would meet up in the park and run around, trying to get all of our Magikarps to turn into a Gyarados. More often than not, though, we would just shake the Pokewalker, because it still counted those as steps. 3. Sega Rally Revo I love racing games, and for me, Sega Rally Revo will always be the definitive arcade racer for the PlayStation Portable, also known as the PSP. I got Sega Rally one summer in the Philippines when I was visiting my grandparents. You start the game off in a Subaru Impreza, a true rally rock star and all-round beautiful car. Turns out, my grandma drove the same car. So while I was sat in the back seat of a Subaru going up the Filipino dirt roads in the mountain province of Baguio, I was also driving a Subaru along the dirt roads in the mountain province of Sega. It was a simulation of a Subaru inside of a Subaru. I got a lot of motion sickness that summer. 
but it was still an awesome game, with heaps of variety on dirt roads, racing asphalt and snowy mountains, making it my favorite racer on the PSP. Four, the Guitar Hero series. Guitar Hero 1 to 5, including World Tour and that one DS spin-off, still hold my fondest gaming memories. I had already been learning real guitar for two years before I got this game, but something about being able to hop in and instantly play my favorite rock songs made it so enjoyable. Did you know that you're able to get six stars in a Guitar Hero song? Usually ratings are out of five, but if you beat the whole song without missing a single note and get the maximum score, you get six stars. I got six stars with my brother on a Bon Jovi song. We didn't even know it was possible, so we freaked out, but we were so proud that we didn't miss a single note. Guitar Hero was a way to get all of my friends over in the afternoon and listen to cool music. It will always hold a special place in my heart. So those are my four games that I will never forget, the ones that hold my most special gaming memories. But lucky for me here on GGSP, I get to make more gaming memories every day. I wonder if I have time for a song. Well, we're at the end of the show, but Jax, why don't you tell the GGS peeps what's on next week? For sure, Jem. We're going to take to the snowy slopes for some extreme snowboarding in shredders. The cave. That was so good. Oh, it looks so cool. You know, I really wish I could do that in real life. Oh, me too, Jem. You've got the form down. And don't forget, you can submit your application to be featured as part of our GG Spawn Squad. Head over to our website here and look for the Spawn Squad tile for details on how to send in your audition. Until next week, may all your games be good ones. Jack's out. Jem out. Mm -hmm.